Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I'm here going to read you a little portion of the book, Poison Power by Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur R. Tamplin. And, uh, you know, we'll just forge ahead. It's a bit of a thick book, but perseverance brings success. And that is going to be our motto in stopping the nuclear industry. We're not going to let them kill all of planet Earth with nuclear pollution. So... Anyways, let me get right to it. We are on page 23, and we are on the new subtitle. We're in the introduction, uh, The Nuclear Juggernaut, and the subtitle is The Power. Careful examination of the generation of electric power by nuclear generators is essential. For such examination shows that even in its infancy, this industry might have caused a major health calamity. We have been lucky thus far and have no assurance whatsoever that our luck will hold out as this nuclear generating industry burgeons rashly and unwisely. The leadership of this nuclear juggernaut has been anything but responsible. The top leadership has displayed a total lack of comprehension of radioactive poison and its effects. The top leadership has displayed a total lack of understanding of the basic principles of sound public health practice, which must be applied to new hazardous technology. Worst of all, this same top leadership has demonstrated a lack of responsibility in meeting the moral obligation to provide the public with honest information concerning the real hazards which must be faced. We are not speaking of usual, quote, industrial accidents, unquote. Rather, we are concerned over the hazard of major calamities to human health and life, unparalleled in human history. No shit, Sherlock. Here we are. Welcome to 2015, for fuck's sake. I'm sorry, I will make an effort not to cuss. I apologize. The alternatives. The nuclear juggernaut is by no means necessary to guarantee us an adequate supply of electric power. Far from it. There are several attractive, feasible alternatives to meet electrical power requirements. The choice of a rational alternative is in the hands of the public. Citizens undoubtedly can and should exercise their power to choose a rational, viable future. Constructive action is possible to protect lives, health, and property. It is important to learn how such constructive applications of citizen power can be utilized to counter the ju nuclear juggernaut. New subtitle, The Massive Hoax. About a year ago, we began to perceive the dimensions of the massive hoax being perpetrated on the public. It was very difficult for us to believe that what we observed to be occurring could truly be real. Indeed, up to that time, we, deeply immersed in atomic energy research, had been lulled into the belief that nuclear electricity was the one atomic energy program which posed very little threat to society. How wrong we were. There is a real potential disaster ahead. We now know. It is, we think, important that you share this knowledge with us. Well, that sentence didn't make sense to me. It is, we think, important that you share this knowledge with us. Oh, with us, not with us. I think that's called semantics, folks. Okay, back to the reading. In 1963, we were asked by the Atomic Energy Commission to undertake long-range studies of the potential dangers for man and other species from a variety of so-called, quote, peaceful uses of the atom, unquote. Nuclear electricity generation is one such atomic program. Naturally, we presume that the Atomic Energy Commission seriously wanted to know the truth concerning the magnitude of possible hazards. In fact, 
in assigning this study, in fact, in assigning this study, study mission to us, Chairman Glenn Seaborg assured us that he wanted favorable or unfavorable, unfavorable findings made available to the public. All we want is the truth, Chairman Seaborg said in 1963. We have learned to our great dismay that these assurances were illusory. illusory. It is now clear to us that the Atomic Energy Commission had not contemplated seriously that the studies might reveal serious flaws and dangers in the, quote, peaceful atom, unquote, programs. This kind of truth has proved to be quite unwelcome. The research findings we have made can be expressed succinctly in two statements. Wow. And they've just ignored it, these motherfuckers. Number one, radiation to be, to be expected from several atomic energy programs burgeoning rapidly is a far, far more serious hazard to humans than any of the so-called, quote, experts, unquote, had previously thought possible. Number two, the hazard to this generation of humans from cancer and leukemia as a result of atomic radiation is 20 times as great as had been previously thought. The hazard to all future generations in the form of genetic damage and deaths had been underestimated even more seriously. In a rational society where the health and welfare of citizens would be considered as paramount, such research findings would have been warning, warnings welcomed. And we expected our findings would be welcomed. Instead, we received a torrent of vitriol and personal condemnations from three major sources. Watch this, you guys. The U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. The Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. They run the military. And the electrical utility industry. These motherfuckers. What we wondered could account for the reflex attack upon us by these three groups. What made these three particular three groups so inordinately sensitive to new knowledge concerning the hazard of radiation? What do these three groups share as a common interest? The answer was not far to seek. These three groups act in concert as a powerful promotional triumvirate for nuclear electricity generation. It was not immediately obvious to, <coughs> excuse me, it was not immediately obvious to us why, even so, such a triumvirate should be so violently frightened by knowledge concerning radiation hazards. In fact, one might logically believe knowledge important for the nuclear industry's benefit would be an item of extremely high priority. Slowly it dawned upon us that possibly all was not so wonderful about nuclear electricity generation as the advertisements claimed. Could it be that this triumvir triumvirate had been misleading the public, lulling the public into the belief that no significant hazard existed? Was something being swept under the rug? A little careful probing showed that not only was something being swept under the rug, the entire structure was rotten in every aspect. This entire nuclear electricity industry had been developing under a set of totally false illusions of safety and economy. Not only was there a total lack of appreciation of the hazards of radiation from man, but there was also a total absence of candor considering the hazards of serious accidents. The economics were being treated with rose-colored glasses. And the triumphant knew very well that the stampede to nuclear power initiated by them could not possibly tolerate the bright light of exposure to public scrutiny. 
The more deeply we probed, the more we realized how massive the deception truly was, is. It became quite clear that concealment of truth from the public was regarded as essential. And we realized very clearly why the violent reaction had greeted our presentation of the research findings concerning the radiation hazards to humans. Let me read that sentence again. It became quite clear that concealment of truth from, pub from the public was regarded as essential. And we are still living with that same fucking cover-up secrecy bullshit lies. Let me continue. <clears throat> Further, we came to understand why citizen groups across the country were becoming increasingly concerned and alarmed about the plans for ringing essentially every major metropolitan center with gigantic, totally experimental, untried nuclear power plants. And those motherfuckers did that too. And such public groups expressing their apprehension didn't even know all the extremely serious hazards of radiation about which we had learned through our researches. By speaking with such concerned groups and by listening to them, we finally came to understand that they had found no sincerity, no honesty, and no candor being displayed by the nuclear triumvirate with respect to provision and the real facts behind the nuclear power story. Pure public relations department rubbish was being passed out to the public, heralded as, quote, information, unquote. The false illusion that citizens of concern could be heard was really a mockery of the democratic tradition. Interventions, interventions in hearings before the AEC licensing boards were a joke. The licensing boards chosen by the AEC and known to be favorable to nuclear power development went through the motions of a hearing and inevitably returned a rubber stamp decision that a go-ahead should be given to every nuclear power plant. The promoters of nuclear electricity have recently been bemoaning the public alarm and have been criticizing those who raise questions as stirrer uppers or as conservationist kooks. That word kooks still lasts. I was actually called a kook in the last week, 2015, because I made a statement that all the fucking nuclear power plants need to be closed down yesterday. Wow. We do not for one moment worry at all about the, quote, public's alarm, unquote, over the dangers it faces from an irresponsible nuclear juggernaut. The real source of concern is that the public is not sufficiently alarmed and frightened over the rash, irresponsible actions of the men who are stampeding this country into a potential nightmare. These men are much more frightening than the hazards of radiation. Amen to that, brother. How shall we cope with men who initiate and promote rash technologies that can spell irrevocable disaster? Hello, Hamford. It is truly unfortunate that the men responsible for ill-advised technological ventures such as nuclear electric power generation are rarely called upon by name to explain their actions. The cloak of anonymity protects them from the responsibility for what they do, even if their actions ultimately compromise the very survival of humans, and we are still living with that. It is of the utmost importance that every concerned citizen learn to identify the men behind the antisocial and anti-human, ill-considered technological ventures. So let me put a star on that fucking page and let me not forget that word of advice. It is utmost importance of every concerned citizen to identify the men behind antisocial and anti-human, ill-considered technological ventures. So I guess we have some homework to do. Find out who these motherfuckers are. It is of the utmost importance that the men who promote such industries be identified publicly 
and be asked by the public to answer the serious moral questions they have thus far sidestepped. One cannot ask a nameless bureaucracy anything, but the men within the bureaucracy must be brought forward to answer the questions they seek to avoid. Right. We saw what happened with the barber boxer demanding answers. They're like, oh, fuck you. Okay, we're back to this, page 29. Congressman Chet Holifield, a member of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, sits at the very top of the atomic energy pyramid. He, a super hawk promoter of nuclear energy, continues to make public statements verbally and on the printed record, which display an, an appalling ignorance of even the most elemental aspects of radiation hazards for humans. Amounts of radiation exposure that concern the world biological community as being characterized by potentially dangerous long-term consequences are described by Mr. Holyfield as, quote, abundantly safe, unquote. It is not that Mr. Holyfield hasn't been provided the necessary biological and medical information. He simply displays no interest in listening to such information. The U.S. Atomic Energy Commissioners, currently Seaborg, Johnson, Ramey, and Larson, provide a steady stream of platitudes concerning nuclear power. Uh, it was with profound sorrow that we learned of the untimely accidental death of Commissioner, AEC Commissioner Theos Thomas after this book was written. While many of the comments made by, the, by Commissioner Thomas concerning radiation hazards are criticized in the text of this book. Such criticism in no way was ever directed toward the person of Commissioner Thompson. So I guess after the fact, okay. The AEC Atomic Energy Commissioners, currently Seaborg, Johnson, Ramey, and Larson, provide a steady stream of platitudes concerning nuclear power, platitudes that do not even remotely address the real issues of concern. Instead of facing their moral and social obligation to explain truthfully their total ignorance of the hazards of the major accidents in nuclear power plants and of sabotage at many steps throughout the nuclear power industry, <coughs> they simply issue soothing unsupported and unsupportable statements concerning the safety of such plants and operation. None of the commissioners has even begun to address himself to the serious questions raised repeatedly by scientists and by the public at large. The major recent, the major recent answer to the serious public concern has been to double the size of their public relations efforts all generously supported at taxpayer expense, which means we're paying for them to lie to us, essentially. That's really what that means. The public must invite these men to begin expressing in a responsible manner the real questions surrounding their nuclear power promotions. Lastly, we must turn our attention to the directors and presidents of the electric utility industry. Okay, underline that, star the page. We must learn to turn our attention to the directors and presidents of the utility electric. So I live in Lane County, and we have eWeb here. So I guess I need to find that out, who these people are. And we also have the Spring, I think it's called Springfield Utility Board. <coughs> the names of these men are rarely known to the public. They shun public questioning concerning the serious moral issues that have failed to face squarely. I'm sorry. They shun public questioning concerning the serious moral issues they have failed to face squarely. Without any valid evidence, their publicity departments say we must have nuclear power to meet our electrical needs. At the very same time, they authorize the spending of millions of dollars to advertise for increased consumption of electric power. No better scheme for creation of self-fulfilling prophecies could be imagined. And this, too, is, of course, ultimately added to the consumer's electric bills. Wow. 
<coughs> Further, the directors and presidents of electric utility industries staunchly refuse to learn anything concerning the true hazard of their byproduct radioactive poisons. It is regrettable that initially they were duped into believing no hazards existed through the falsely optimistic statements emanating from the Atomic Energy Commission. This, however, cannot be accepted as an adequate basis for their steadfast refusal to learn. Oh my gosh, we're at 20 minutes. I was hoping I could get through this. We've only got like three pages. Well, I got, guess we've got four pages left. I'll stop. I don't want to make a half hour video. So, um, and I'll also cut down the comments from the peanut factory. And uh, I'll read again tomorrow night, you guys. Put your courage feet on. Ciao.